this lesson we'll look at z intervals for proportions. First we've got to establish when it's fair to use this model and that's the case when the normal approximation to the binomial is fair. Recall what that was. In that case we wanted NP to be large and NQ to be large. N was the number of trials and P was the probability of success. So in a sense NP is the number of successes. Similarly N is the number of trials and Q is the probability of failure on a given trial. So NQ is a total number of failures. So we need the number of successes or the total number of winners to be large and we need the total number of losers or failures to be large. If that happens then it is fair for us to use the Z interval for proportions. So here's our notation. We use the letter little p to denote the population proportion. Remember that represents a characteristic of an entire population. P is a parameter. We use the symbol p hat to denote the sample proportion. So p hat is a statistic. It represents a characteristic of some sample. And if we want to obtain a confidence interval for p, we use this rule. p hat plus or minus z alpha by 2 times the square root of p hat. q hat is, of course, just 1 minus p hat divided by n. So here's our example. You are told that a random sample of 200 registered voters yields 57 who support a piece of legislation. So we have 57 winners and well over 100 losers. So therefore, both of those numbers are large. And it's fair for me to use this z interval for proportions. Our goal is to find a 95% confidence interval for the proportion of all voters who support this legislation. So we have a random sample of 200. We want to generalize from the 200 to the entire population. So here are our statistics. p hat 57 over 200, which is 0.285. q hat simply 1 minus p hat, 0.715, and n is 200. We want a 95% confidence interval. So to do that, we're going to find alpha, and alpha is simply 1 minus that confidence level. So alpha is 1 minus 0.95 or 0.05. And we need alpha divided by 2, so alpha divided by 2 is 0.025. And our formula requires z alpha by 2, and in this case, z alpha by 2 would be z of 0.025. So here's our picture. We have a z distribution, 95% in the middle, 0.025 in the left tail, 0.025 in the right tail. We want to find the z-scores that correspond to this. We'll ask Minitab to help us with that. So if we say INV CDF 0.025, normal 0, 1, of course, a standard normal has a mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1, that will give me the z-score that lands in this position. So Minitab tells us that with a probability of 0.025, the x-score, or in this case, z-score, is negative 1.95996 and we typically round that to negative 1.96. So I have negative 1.96 here and positive 1.96 here. And once that's the case we can then conclude that z sub 0 0.025 is negative 1.96. So there's our data, there's our z of 0 0.025 and here's our formula. So plugging 0.285 in here I'm going to plug in 1.96. Since it's plus or minus, the negative sign here isn't really an issue. So it'll be 0.285 plus or minus 1.96 square root. The p hat is 0.285, the q hat is 0.715, and the n is 200. So there are numbers. Doing some computation, we get 0.285 plus or minus 0.0626. So that our 95% confidence interval for the population proportion is indeed from 0.2224 to 0.3476. Next, I want to use Minitab to check the results. Well, all I'm going to say there is to make sure that we use the interval based on a normal approximation. Okay, to do this, we're going to go up to the Stat button, down to Basic Statistics, and over to One Proportion. This will give us the information we need for One Proportion. And then we're going to pull that over. And you'll notice we have the number of events and the number of trials. Events is the number of winners. In our case, we had 57 winners. And the number of trials is 200. 57 winners out of 200 trials. Next, I'm going to go to Options. So uh, the confidence level, we want a 95% confidence interval, so we're going to leave that. We're not going to concern ourselves with this yet. We are going to click the button that says Use Test and Interval Based on Normal Distribution. 
since we are using a Z, that's the model that Minitab should use as well. And you'll see your 95% confidence interval from you, 0 0.2224 to 0 0.34756, which is very close to the numbers that we had using our formula. Our next question is to find the 99% confidence interval for that same data set. So P hat, Q hat, and N are all the same. What changed is the confidence level. So if we're doing 99% confidence level, alpha should equal 0.01. And if that's the case, we're going to go ahead and find alpha divided by 2, which will be 0.005. So what we need to do is we need to find Z of 0.005. And I'd like to use the applet that is on the screen to go ahead and find Z of 0.005. So you'll notice I put in a 0 for the mean and 1 for standard deviation because that's what we have to have for a standard normal. And I want 0 0.005 in the left tail. Then we'll let the applet compute that. And what does it tell us? It tells us that value is negative 2.5758. So my z alpha by 2 here is about negative 2.576. And we're going to go ahead and use that in our computation. So here's all of my statistics, p hat, q hat, and n. z.005 is negative 2.576, and we're doing p hat plus or minus z alpha by 2. We're at p hat, q hat over n. So it'll look very similar to the last example, except for this multiplier is now 2.576, which will make this entire larger number uh, a larger number, which will make the confidence interval wider. So we have 0.285 plus or minus 0.0822 which gives me a 99% confidence interval from 0.2028 to 0.3672. Please notice that the 99% confidence interval is indeed wider than the 95% confidence interval. So let's look at one more question. We're going to take a, a random sample of 500 introductory statistics students, and we will find that 110 of them earned a grade of A. So we don't have all introductory statistics students out across the country. We just have a random sample of 500. So 110 out of 500 getting A's will be our statistic. We want to find the 95% confidence interval for the proportion of all introductory students who have earned grades of A. We want to generalize something from this sample to the entire population. Use the statistic to make an inference about the parameter. So here are our numbers, 110 out of 500, 22% earned an A, which means, of course, 78% did not. So Q hat is a probability of a failure, which in this case means not getting an A. N is a total number of trials, N is 500. So again, we remember from before that a Z of 0.025 is negative 1.96. Our formula is P hat plus or minus Z alpha by 2 root P hat Q hat over N. So our P hat is 0.22 plus or minus 1.96. Again, we don't need to worry about the negative sign times the square root of p hat 0.22, q hat 0.78 over 500. And then that's going to give us 0.22 plus or minus 0.036. So we're going to conclude here that the 95% confidence interval for p is from 0 0.184 to 0.256. And we're going to want to check this on Minitab. So again, we want to go to our stat button. We're going to go to basic statistics and we are going to go to the one proportion button. And the numbers that we had there before are still there. And we need to change this. This time we're going to have 110 out of 500. We had 110 winners, 500 trials. And then what are we going to do? We're going to uh, go to options. And you'll notice we have a 95% confidence level there. We could change that to 99 or 98 or 90, but we want to make it 95. And this is the button that tells us to make sure we use the test and the interval based on the normal distribution. So we're going to say OK here. We're going to say OK there. And indeed, there we have our 95% confidence interval for P. We don't know what the proportion is for all intro students to get A's, but we think that that proportion is somewhere between 0.1837 and 0.2563, which you'll notice is essentially the same as the number we had last time, 184 and 0.256. So our results from Minitab verify the results we had from our formula.